Welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going back to Snake Land. Indiana Jones would not like it, but we are we, we're gonna like it. We've got a puzzle called No O in Adder, and it's by Scruffer Mudder. And um, it has quite a long set of rules, but I've, I've just read through them before I turned on the webcam, and they sound jolly interesting indeed. We have a bit of modulo arithmetic to do today, so I hope that that appeals to some of you at least. Um, before we kick off, one or two things to mention. Firstly, a very, very happy birthday to H.B. Owen, who on the Discord server goes under the pseudonym of Jojo81, I believe. And that's your friend Robin Tynan, who's been in touch with us. Uh, HBO in so I hope I've got the day right you know me I'm not known for my admin admin skills um, but if I have got the day right I hope you've had a brilliant birthday with loads of cake um, now the next thing I need to tell you about is a sudo well it's not a sudo competition it's a logic competition that is going on over on logic masters India right now um, it's a Karoto uh, competition now Karoto is one of those logic po problems that uh, we have covered it on the channel a couple of times. It's a very beautiful um, sort of pencil puzzle. Uh, and um, yeah, and I'm happy to know that the puzzles in that competition have all been compiled by none other than Cheel Beanhacker, who, who is Backpow over on the Discord server, a name that will be familiar to many of you. Backpow is a very, very, very quick solver and also a brilliant setter of puzzles. So if you think you might enjoy that, I would definitely encourage you to have a go. Um, now, the final thing to mention is just an update on our app situation. If you own any of our apps, you must make sure they are up to date right now because they should have 100 puzzles in. We have updated all our apps over the last couple of weeks to include the, or to make sure all the puzzles are there, all the hints are there, and some of these puzzles are extraordinary. We have got the great and the good of the Sudoku world who've contributed to them, so people like Fistmafell. Uh, codec uh, to name but two um, so yeah there are there are some absolutely wonderful handcrafted puzzles for your delectation and we hope that you enjoy them do drop us an email by the way if you do enjoy them we do like getting feedback about things like that now that all said and done let's get on with no o in adder by scruffer mudder the rules are as follows normal sudoku rules apply Additionally, the solver must find a single snake of orthogonally connected digits beginning at the given one, uh, which does not touch itself, even diagonally. So just to show you what that means, let's imagine we have a snake that started to wend its way like this. The snake could not, whoopsie, the snake could not do that because this naughty snake has touched itself at a point there and it's not allowed to do that. So, and it clearly can't also, also it can't touch itself orthogonally, so it can't simply turn back on itself. Don't do that, that will also get the puzzle wrong. So that the snake mustn't touch itself diagonally or orthogonally. It does not touch any of the white dots, uh, but, must, but must visit each three by three box in the grid. So however this snake goes, it's got to make sure that it visits all the boxes. Um, and I've realized I've just I've just run it straight through some white dots, which I'm, I'm not meant to do. So I would have got the puzzle wrong. Um, each digit on the snake is the sum of the previous two digits modulo 10, e.g. 5 plus 7 equals 2. Now, hopefully most of you are familiar with modulo arithmetic. All that means is we have to find the remainder when two numbers are added up uh, if we were to divide that, that number by 10. So why is 5 plus 7 equal to 2? Well, if we add up 5 plus 7, we get 12. If you divide 12 by 10, you, there is a remainder of, you've guessed it, 2. So in fact, let's carry on with this. Um, if the next digit then would be 7 plus 2 equals 9, the next digit would be 2 plus 9 equals 11. Well, I can't write 11 into the grid, so modulo 10, there's a remainder of 1. Uh, and then it would actually then it would actually break. Okay, so this, this sequence won't exist in this puzzle because if it did, the next digit would be a zero and that I cannot put in the grid. I don't think normal Sudoku rules apply and that therefore we can't put zeros in. Um, now, what's, what else? Oh, it says NB, the second snake digit after the given one can be any digit. Okay, I hadn't thought about that, but does that make sense to me? I guess it does, because 
Yeah, if, if, if it says each digit on the snake is the sum of the previous two digits, that does raise a question if you haven't got two previous digits. So, right, okay, that does make sense. Um, Grey digits are not on the snake, okay, um, but show the number of snake cells in the surrounding up to eight cells. Okay, so let's imagine the snake did this. Um, then this digit would have to be a five because this sees five snake cells assuming the snake didn't come back on itself and do that because if it did that this would have to be a six so we're going to have to keep an eye on gray cells um now there's still one or two more rules um cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits so that's normal crop key rules and not all possible dots are given so if we worked out this was whoopsie this was five and this was six uh, that's fine. Now it's perfectly possible that this is a five and this is a six. You can have consecutive dominoes in the puzzle uh, elsewhere. It's just we know that these these dominoes here contain consecutive digits. And that's all the rules. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, how should we get cracking? I can see the snake doesn't. In fact, let's let's give the snake a color. We'll make the snake purple. So the snake can't come down, can it? Because the snake's not allowed to hit white dots. So in fact, I should I should have another color for my white dots. I'll make those green. I was going to make them gray, but that would that would be. I think confusing because the greys have an additional restriction not only can they not be snake but they tell us the count of the snake in the surrounding cells right yeah okay but the snake can't come down because if it comes down it hits it hits a wall before it's visited all nine boxes so now this digit has to be it can't be a one so it's not possible for the snake to go and do this because although this cell would only see one snake cell, it would, uh, there would be two ones in the box. So this is either two or three. Um, now, so I can't see what that means actually. I have a feeling that means something quite profound, but it's it's not occurring to me what that is. Uh, no, okay, so right, think about something else. The snake has to visit every single box. Okay, I think there are some ways it could do that. It could do things like this. Yeah, okay, no, I, I was wondering whether there was going to be some restriction based off the placement of these greys right what about these two cells and these have to right these have to see some snake this cell has to be a two there we go there's a deduction it has to be a two because it can't be a one by sudoku and yet it can't be a zero because uh, i can't put zero in a sudoku so it's got to see some snake cells and the maximum number of snake cells it will see is two so in fact both of those are therefore snake and therefore this has to be a three because it can't be a two and it's already seeing two snake cells. So that's snake and this is a three. And this is a two by Sudoku, which is, uh, ooh, is that interesting? It might be. No, okay. Right, that cell is on the snake. That is what I'm going to allege. Because, because this is a two, either the snake comes horizontally one and then it can't go to this cell because that would make this have to be a three. So if it does that, it must turn up and then it must take that cell. So that's one possibility we get this sort of Tetris shape. Now the other possibility is that this cell goes up as its first move, in which case it must turn and then it can't touch itself orthogonally, so it can't dip down again, so it would have to go there. So this digit is always the fourth digit along the snake. Um, right. Now. I 
have not got a clue what to do now. Um, oh, uh, right. I was about to say I can start to extend this down here. But I actually can't do that because I don't know where the snake ends. So if this was the end of the snake, the snake would never come to this cell. Oh, that's rotten. That's very annoying. Yeah, okay, so the snake could... Well, now either this is a snake end or this digit is taken or this cell is taken by the snake. The snake I don't know okay I'm not sure what happens down here um, so I can't put a two in this sequence of white dots and that's not quite good enough to know anything about it uh, obviously these cells are sequential but the options we've got start from three four five six seven eight nine so there's far there's seven digits there so I'm I can't quite deduce what must be on this dot now hmm. so it must be to do with the modulo rule mustn't it there's there's nothing else here well i can't see anything else here so it must be the modulo rule so what is right the second digit is not a two after the one and it could be a three, but it could only be a three if it, if, if it turns upwards here. So you go one, three, four, seven, broken. Ah, okay, well, it's not a three either. The second digit on the snake is not a three because if it is a three, by Sudoku, it has to go there. Now, one plus three is four, so that's a four. If you divide four by 10, you have a remainder of four because there are zero tens in the number four. So this would be a four. But now the next digit, which we know has to go here, has to be a seven. Three plus four is seven. And now what's the next digit? Now, there are two interesting things about this. The first is that the next digit is a one because four plus seven is 11, which is a remainder of one when divided by 10. But that one has to go here because this two needs to be fulfilled. And therefore that digit, if we if we have done this, this has to be a one. And it can't be, because it will repeat. Um, in order to make the two work, we'd have to take both of those two cells. So actually we can say it's not three. Now, admittedly, that's not a great, that's not a great march forward, is it? So if it's four, the problem then is that the four can go in either of those positions. One, four. Oh no, I thought that was going to break immediately. Oh, that was quite interesting because I saw it was going to five and then I was like one plus four plus five is ten and it's broken, but it's not because it's four plus five equals nine. Uh, let's just think about this actually. I might do this over here so that I don't pollute my snake. Don't pollute your snakes. That's very mean to them. One plus four is five. Four plus five is nine. 5 plus 9 is 14. Then we get 13. Then we get 7. Ah, and that would stop. Right, that's interesting. If I haven't messed up my arithmetic there, 4 is not the second number on the snake. Because if it was, the snake would be limited to being only a 7-cell snake. And there's no way I can visit all 9 boxes if I've only got 7 cells of snake. Let me just double check that. 1 plus 4, that is 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. 5 plus 9 is 14. That's 13. That's 7. And 3 plus 7 is definitely 10. Yeah, okay, so that doesn't work either. So this is probably something that we're going to have to explore. 1 plus 5. Oh, yeah, this is why the title is. This is why it's, it, it's, it's not no O in adder. It's no zero in adder so it's saying that on the adder that we're building the snake that we're building there must not be a zero because of sudoku oh that's lovely right so not only is it true to say no o's in adder there is no zero in adder so one plus five is six six plus five is eleven uh that's seven eight fifteen thirteen uh eight 
Oh, this this snake is a very lengthy snake. Now, no, it's broken again. It's broken again with a zero here. So this snake is longer, though. We've got an 11, a length 11. No, there's no way that works. There's no way you can get all... No, it's clearly just nonsense. You, there's no way you can visit all nine boxes in 11 snake cells. It simply won't work. So five is wrong. Let's try six. Um, six would go with seven. 13. Oh, <laughs> so six, six immediately fails. One plus six is seven. Six plus seven is 13. Seven plus three is 10. Right, so that doesn't work. I hope something works or I've misunderstood this um, in a very barbarically stupid way. So let's keep going with this. Oh, eights again, ones again, nines again. Da, ah, that doesn't work. Again. Thing is, if I get one of these sums wrong, it's going to be, I could be making all sorts of incorrect deductions here. Eight, that is eight, that is 15, that is 13, that's eight, that's nine. One plus nine is 10. So that is that doesn't work. So now we're got, we're up to eight, which would go to nine, which would go to seventeen, which would go to sixteen, which would go to thirteen, which would go to nine, which would go to twelve, which would go to eleven, which would go to three, which would go to ah four, seven, um, eleven, eight, nine. This is not oh. Ah, hang on, I've gone too far here. This is better though. This is better. There is no there is no zero on this string of digits. Because well there isn't. And I've I've started to repeat myself. Look, one eight nine seven, one eight nine, the next digits are seven. We've we've got we've we've sort of we've found recursion here. So this is so eight this is good because it, it we have found a digit for which this works. Now, if we can disprove nine, we we then know the second digit is going to be an eight up here. So, oh, okay, I can disprove nine quite easily because one plus nine is 10 and there is a zero remainder. So that would be a two cell, very snub, stubby and somewhat inadequate snake. So let us go with eight as the next digit. So there is an eight and then there is a nine and then there is a seven. How do I, why is there a seven in there? How have I got that? I am very confused. That is the right number and it's in the right position. 1 plus 8 is 9, 9 plus 8 is 7, is, well, it's 17, which has a remainder of 7. Hang on, is that because when I did 3, I filled it in? 3, oh, it is, right, okay, this is, this is a remnant of what we were doing at the start, and I was like, what? Is this some sort of mystical filling in of the puzzle? It is not that, alas. This is simply the result of when I when I tried to put three in here, it was it went one three four seven and then that was a one wasn't it and that broke. So, but that is a seven because it's the fourth cell along the sequence and the sequence starts one eight nine seven. So, so that is a seven. But I don't know if we know which which cell the nine is in. And now I've forgotten the sequence as well. So hang on, let's go, let's actually write the sequence over on the right hand side. We, it starts with one, then we know it's an eight because nothing else worked. Then it's a nine, then it's a seven, then it's a six, oops. Uh, then it's a three, then it's a nine. This is like trying to remember pi. Then, then it's a one, then it's a three, then it's a four, then it's a seven, then it's a one then it's at eight. Oh, and this is where we get back into it oh yeah okay so it stops it restarts to um we start to sort of get repeating at this one so we can delete those two so it is a 12 cell 
repeating sequence and so if this was eight we'd have to have a nine here so nine could be there but if this is eight because we can't break the two clue oh so this is always a nine right that's always a nine no matter which way this goes so that gets filled in now after the seven we've got a six in one of these two cells how do we see which of those is correct after the six you've got a three. Oh, this is going wrong isn't it after the three you've got a nine ah right okay this nine I think this nine right down here I think is interesting because as the, as the snake moves into this box, which is what it must do, it seems to have two directions it can go in. It can come through this little pathway, or it can come through this little pathway. Now, if it comes through this little pathway, all three of those digits have to be taken. And therefore, after the seven, we'd have to go six, three, nine, six, three, nine, and the nine would repeat. So we do not come through this little pathway. We must come through this little pathway. And so there is a six in one of those. And then after the six, we've got a three, nine, two sequence looking at that. So we go three, nine, two, and that looks good. Those twos are all missing each other by Sudoku. And after the two, three, nine, two, we've got a one. So there is a one in one of those cells, and then there's a three. Ah, beautiful, right, this is so lovely, isn't it? So how can, if this goes down here, I think nine, two, yeah, we have to go one, three, and there would be a th repeated three in the column. So we must, so it must turn right, and we must do this. And so this is not a one. And after the three, we have a four. Now the four is in one of two places, and after the four we have a seven. So there's either a seven, oh no, this is where it's gonna get tricky, look. So we either go four, seven up here, or we go four here and then seven in one of two places as the next digits on the snake. Oh, and now, <laughs> now, now my ability to pencil mark the puzzle is going to be rather broken because I was about to note that there's a two and a three in these cells. I, I'll put it in, but we have to bear in mind this, this final column digit is definitely not a normal pencil mark. Um, ah, I know something. This white dot is, is more restricted now because I can't put eight or nine or seven on it. I can't put eight or nine on it because if I put eight and nine on it, I'll have to have a seven on it. So, so we can't put two on it. So we're looking at numbers three, four, fives, and sixes into these squares. And these two can't be threes. So there must be a four and a five in this sequence. Um, is that helpful? It's quite restrictive on this digit, actually. This digit can't be one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, or nine. That is a naked single. Good grief, that is vicious. Ah, ah, now, isn't that the digit we need next on the snake? Hang on, we needed one, eight, nine, seven, six. So this, Ah, hang on a minute. Is that the six or is that the six? I mean, this is a six. This is a six by Sudoku, but is it is it the snaky six? I don't know if we know that. This, I'm not sure actually. I'm. This is definitely a six, which actually impacts these cells. Look, right. So this has got to be a three, four, five. Uh, run so it must do this 
but I'm not so certain. I bet mm, maybe by uniqueness this is going to be a six in the sense that if this is a six, I can see it's going to push the eight here because because the snake can't touch itself. This would have to be the eight. But that could this eight could get resolved by an eight down here or here or something like that. So I'm not sure. I, I, there's probably a way of telling whether this is snake or not, but I don't see I don't see for sure why this can't be snake. Um, no, sorry. Okay, so let's think about what goes on next. Oh. Ah, this is really, this is, this, it's very easy to make a mistake here. I was about to label both of these cells green on the basis that the snake couldn't get to them. And although it's true to say this is green, and that's green because if this was snake, it would touch the snake here. That could be snake because we don't know where the end of the snake is. So the snake could come and end in this cell. Ah, right, but this is restricted now. That's seeing, that, right, this is seeing five snake cells, and it could only see a maximum of six. So that's a five or a six. Um, this can't be one, two, or three, or five. So that's four, six, seven. It can't be eight. It can't be eight, because if it's eight, you have to do a ring around this. That's not a snake. It's a snake that's eaten its tail, and that doesn't seem to be in the rules. So this is four, six, or seven. This square can't be one, two, three, or four. So this, is, this has got a lot of snake around it. So that's five, six, or seven. This white dot could be four, five, or could have an eight on it. Ah, that this might be how this eight gets done. If this has got an eight on it, that will look there and force this eight upwards and define the start of the snake. It still won't tell us about the six, though. Oh, if that was a six, that would tell us about the six. Um, so... So what's the next digit on the snake? We go three, we go three, nine, two, one, three. Three, nine, two, one, three. We've got four and seven, and then back to the beginning. Fours, sevens, and ones. So four, seven. Actually, that looks, uh, yeah, in fact, that's quite interesting. If it does go up, it would have to go four, seven, one, very specifically like that because they couldn't put a one in row two again, that would clash. So that I believe is possible. Now, if it turns down, this square is a four, and that would mean this has to be very high. Hang on, if that's a four, that has to be at least six, which I think means Yeah, that's it. Very. In fact, this would be six if this turns down, because it because it knocks four out of the middle cell. We then have a bit of a problem making this uh, this total valid. The next digit on the snake is a seven. Now, if we put the if we if, if we turn the snake away, it's broken. We've broken the puzzle because we've got four snake cells around this this digit, which needs to be a six, but we could only have a maximum of one more snake cell uh, around this this thing because let me in fact let's do this longhand because if we try and go this way with the snake the snake can't touch itself so none of those cells can be snake so you can see that the maximum count for this cell would be a five not a six or indeed a seven so if we do come down we have to go there and we know this digit is a seven which makes this digit a six and then the next digit is a, a one again. So we'd have to turn away. That would be a nine by Sudoku.
and this breaks the puzzle for a well a somewhat strange and beautiful reason this breaks the puzzle it breaks the puzzle for a reason i noticed when we were going through this but you know it i i just i, I don't know why i noticed it but i did and that is that this sequence is fiveless there is no five on the sequence of of snakeage in in this puzzle because you can't the way the maths works now if there's no five what happens in this box and the answer is really cool this by sudoku this cell has to be a nine and by sudoku this cell has to be a five and this will have to be the eight therefore so this box so if the snake turns down from this three we end up in this position having to get a sixth cell on the snake the next cell on the snake is a one which is one of these two so the only way you can pinch another snake cell is here and that puts five on the sequence and it's not allowed to be on the sequence so that doesn't work and that means that all of that means that the snake doesn't turn down and that must be profoundly that this is going to be massive because if the snake has to turn up we know it goes we, we actually got a few digits on it didn't we two one three two one three four seven one so we've got to go four seven one all snake we've got to go this is now a six because it sees six cells on the state that's beautiful right and this six is what we were after in terms of disambiguating the start of the snake because now this cannot be a six so this must be the six on the sequence of snake which means this can't be an eight or the snake wiggles and touches itself so that is green that puts an eight in the corner which doesn't get a song but should get some sort of fanfare because that is marvelous and now oh well now this is not snake because if that cell there is snake however we get to it we're most certainly never getting out of that cell again and we can't visit the bottom of the grid which we need to do so this is green in fact yeah in fact the snake can never turn up now because if it turns up because it can't touch itself it could never turn down so all of these cells are green um, and the next digit on the snake is a an eight so there's an eight here or an eight here and those seem to be both plausible at the moment now in this row we need five and eight Oh, okay. So, ah, so this is, oh, no, 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 no. It's going to overlap my, my numbers. Oh dear. Ah, no, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to write my sequence of 12 digits into, into this green space, because this green space is not going to be interfered with by snake anymore. So my sequence is one, Actually, I can put the eight in. I can put the one eight nine all in one cell as well because they are. It is an ascending sequence, so the well, the way the pencil marks work is all good there. So then we need a seven. Oh, yeah. I can only put the seven there. If I put the six in, it'll reverse the order, and that will be wrong. Seven, six, three nine. I can put in one cell. Oh, then the t ah. So then the two goes in one cell, but then one, three, four, seven, I think I can put all in one cell like that. So there we go. This is a representation of the order of the sequence, the order of the snake. Um, and now I can fill in my eight here and I can fill in my five here and I can fill in my four there. And now I can fill in my green marks in these cells look they none of these can be snake anymore ah right that's interesting this cell is now under pressure it can't be six by sudoku and it can't be seven anymore because i can't put seven purples around it so that's a four so there's a four down here so that's a two three four triple now in this box um, let's get rid of my all of this stuff because it's going to be confusing so we've got two three four triple here doesn't ah that's not seven so this is five or six 
Ooh. No, not quite. One has to be in one of these two cells. One has to be in one of these two cells. And... Okay, now we're stuck, are we? Uh, what goes on this white dot? Probably not much. We can't have... Oh, it's got to be seven and eight, actually. That's the only consecutive pair that, that isn't interfered with by digits looking at this domino. So this is seven, eight. This is two, five, and nine. And I don't, really, I don't really want to disturb pencil marks at the top. Is it likely this is going to be where we have to make a break in? Um, let me just think about this. This box needs one, two, and five. That's not resolved yet. And this box therefore needs three, four, and six, which is definitely not resolved yet. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to leave this alone for a little bit longer. Now, what is the next digit after the one? Wasn't it in the eight? Yeah, yes. We reach the end of the sequence and then we're back to the start. So this is this is probably snake, but could the eight be here? And the answer to that is I don't know. Ah, oh, maybe this tells us five or six here. No, that could still be. Yeah, if, if this is snake, we then have to dip in here and do that in order to make this at least a five. Eight, nine, seven, six. Ah, beautiful. Right, this is lovely. Okay, I now know that this is snake. And the reason for that is let's try and make it not snake and see what happens. It's all to do with this two, three, four, triple. If this, if this is, if the snake does dip down here, look what the next digits are. We've got eight, nine, seven, and six. Well, how on earth are we going to put those into that that without, you know, if we try this, it's not going to work. We're going to have to go eight, nine, seven, six, and the snake's touching itself because we can't, there's no valid snake digit coming up that's a two, three, or a four. So this is definitely wrong. Um, and therefore, this square, well, therefore, this square is snake. The snake must turn down. It can't touch itself. It must take this square. And it goes eight, nine, seven, which places one. And now six is the next digit on the snake, which is not this digit. So it must take six here. And then the next digit on the snake is a three, which must be here. That's absolutely beautiful. This is a class puzzle, isn't it? It really is. So now this is now definitely green, and this might be known. It sees it is a five. Oh, <laughs> which we could have seen by Sudoku. But don't do anything by Sudoku if you can do it by more elegant means. Now, that's an eight by Sudoku. So these are sixes and sevens, I think, which somehow is not resolved. Uh, so these squares are one, eight, nine, which means this is a nine which means this is a 1-8. We still don't know where the end of this snake is, though, do we? What's the next digit after 3 on my snake? It is... I hope it is 9. That would be good. Yes, it is. It's 9. Well, 9 is not 2 and it's not 4, so we've got to go down again. So that's a 9. Now the next digit is a 2, 1, 3, 4, 7. Right. So again, the snake, if the snake comes down, its next two digits are two and one, and the ones would clash, so it never visits that cell. So it must turn, and it is a two next, which, which fixes the four and the two. Oh, don't, don't use the top row for Sudoku, sorry. I was looking at this thinking, why haven't I filled this digit in? Well, it's because I'm being dense now. These squares are fives, sixes, and sevens, which means these two squares are eights and nines, which I can fill in. This is snake, isn't it? This one. This is therefore not snake. These are not snake. Snake must come into this cell, and the digit it's going to be a one. And that's 
Well, I can see that's going to give me a 1 here, but I don't want to put it in yet. After the 1, 9, 2, 1, 9, 2, 1, 3, 4, 7. Woo! That's great. Okay. So there's a 3 here, so the snake cannot turn up or down. It must continue. And then it cannot turn up and down because there's a 4 here, so it must continue. And now it needs a 7. Oh, it could get a 7 here. Ah! No, and it must. It must because the 4 clue. To, for the 4 clue to be correct, one of these needs to be snake. And we've just worked out that this is the next snake digit. So the only way we can fill one of these in a snake legitimately is by putting in a 7 here. Which may, ah, and that's going to give us Sudoku 6 and 5 here. These are both green. Um, all of this, all of these are now green. This is green, or it would touch itself at a point. All of the bottom row is green, because we can never get out. So the only question is how far into this box we come now. Now after, so we've gone 4, 7, back to the start. So this has to be 1, oh, this is working as well, 1, 8, 9. So this is a 7. Yeah, and it is a 7 because we have to visit this box and we haven't done that yet. So that's a 7. And after the 7 is a 6. So can this be a Oh, it can. No, 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 it can't. Beautiful. How could this be a 6? This cell would have no value at all. So the snake, we've finished our snake. The snake is absolutely and utterly replete. Um, and we can do some Sudoku. So seven and six go in. Now, I think, is it safe to get rid of this? I think so, because I've done my snake. So it ought to be fine to get rid of that. And now we can, well, now we can write the one in by Sudoku into this cell. These two squares are two and five, which is resolved. These two squares are three, four, and six, which is nearly resolved. Oh, but not actually resolved. Uh, this square is resolved. That's a 9. This is a 2 by Sudoku. This is a 5. Oh, look, we've got greys as well. So that's a 1 in order to allow this one to be counted. This sees 3 snake cells. That finishes my 3 and my 6. This is an 8. Uh, these two cells down here are 5 and 7. Okay, I don't know what they are or which way around they go, and these two squares are 4 and 6, which I do actually know the order of. 4, 6, 5 and 8 over here, which is resolved. So everything ought to come down, well, it's probably going to be these. It's, it's going to be box 7, I think. We need 3 and 4 here, which is resolved. We need 1 and, uh, one and 6 there, which is resolved. That puts 2 on the dot, and this square should be a 9. 5 and 7 is still not resolved over here. Uh, these squares are 5 and 6, which is resolved. So that resolves the 5 and the 7. Okay. Uh, these two squares are 2 and 8. 2 up here does that. So that fixes my 8. My 7 puts a 7 in here, puts a 9 in there. And I think we have finished the puzzle. So, yeah. Um, that... It's just, it's just wonderful, to be honest. That's so creative and inventive. And what I think is truly beautiful about it were two things. Firstly, that Scruff and Mudder has clearly somehow become aware of the fact there is only one digit that works with a one modulo tenning and creates a repeating sequence. And the fact that that, that that exists as a thing is really rather beautiful. But my favorite part of this puzzle was the fact that Scruffermudder also noticed that there was no five on the sequence. And if there's no five on the sequence, this digit, which would have been a five when we turn this to do, when we turn the snake down and would have needed to be snake, would have broken the puzzle. And that was it's just lovely. It's just lovely, lovely logic. Um, let me know in the in the comments how you got on. Um, I'll be very interested to hear, and I hope that you all enjoyed a bit of a change and a snake puzzle. Every time I do a snake puzzle, it always fills me with a little bit of joy. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.